Hi, so to, this is going to be an overview and tutorial video on the controller UI version 2. So let's set up the input so the example scene works. Originally you had to do this manually, now we included an input, a manager.asset file, they can just import to your project. I want to note that if you do replace your input manager with this input manager, any custom inputs that you had previously will get deleted. So it might work out better for you to do it manually if you made um, any changes to the input manager. So let's ex show this in Explorer. We're going to copy it. And in the main project folder under project settings, we're going to paste it. We're going to click replace. And now all of our inputs should be here. And as you see, beautifully, you get all these D-pad inputs. So now let's open up the example scene and have a quick overview of what's new in controller UI version two. First, you're going to see that now you can do use toggles and drop down menus. Um, you can also, we have a beta scroll view feature where the scroll view snaps to the object that it's looking at. And we have a very early alpha feature where the scroll view can actually smoothly scroll to the item selected. This is very in its very early stages and it might cause some bugs. Um, but I want to show that there is going in a future update, this will be fully polished and it be included in part as part of the package. A, a widely requested feature was to be able to disable and enable buttons um, on the fly in game. So now if we have buttons that are selected over here and we disable disable the buttons, we can still, the system automatically finds another button and selects that one. Um, so you don't get any troubles selecting new buttons again. So that's a quick overview and let's set it up so it works in our own scene. So we're going to hit pause on that. We're going to, in file, we're going to create a new scene and we're going to create a canvas. We're going to drag the controller event system onto here and we'll fill out the button main. The button main is going to be the button that's in first in your list, but it's not required. If you don't fill it out, the system will find a button automatically for you. So let's go into buttons and we're going to duplicate this and I can move it up. There you go. Beautiful. And so what you see here, the yellow lines is are the navigation events. And previously the system tried to create its own navigation events. Now it's just using the ones that are built into Unity. You can enable and disable the visualization in the inspector if you select a button and you can click visualize. The, so these are the exact um, inputs that are needed to travel to a certain button. And if you're not happy with the ones that are created automatically by Unity, you can change the navigation um, from horizontal to vertical, or you can even select exactly the ones that you want to be able to toggle between. So there's that, and now we're going to select button, button as the main button. So we're going to hit play. Oh, forgot to do something. So to make it more vis visible that the buttons are getting selected, I'm going to make the highlight color green and the press color, this turquoise color. And so now when I select through the buttons, um, you can see that they're getting pressed and you can interact with them with your controller. And this button doesn't work because I made no navigation events to it. So you can't really select it right now in this tutorial video. Now I also made the documentation a little more uh, explains even some parts of the code. So now you can subscribe certain events into the um, system. So you can subscribe an audio event or a uh, select sound. So when you go switch between buttons, you can play a specific sound. And feel free to contact us if you have any feature requests that you'd like to see in future updates. This has been a short tutorial and overview of the controller UI version 2.